Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to drain and flush your water heater. This is something that you should do about approximately every one to two years. And the reason we do this is to help keep sediment from building up at the bottom. Now if sediment builds up, what can happen is it acts like an insulator. In the case of a gas water heater, it can, kind of, it can create a layer on the bottom which um, lessens the heat transfer from your burner to the tank, which in, turn make, which in turn makes the burner run longer to heat the water, and therefore it's less efficient, using more gas. Now, in the term of an electric water heater, sometimes what could happen is, if it gets so bad, it can insulate the lower element, and if that, if that happens, the lower element will overheat and possibly fail. So first things first, it's very important to make sure that your heat source does, does not in any way come on while you do this procedure. In my case with the gas water heater, a couple ones will be different. I secured myself the best way I can. I have the switch turned to off, the thermostat at its lowest setting. And in this case, I'll also close the gas valve as well, just like that. Now, um, if you have a water heater with a standing pilot, you'll, ha you'll, you'll typically have a knob on top here that will say something along the lines of on, pilot, and off. You can turn the knob just to pilot, and that'll just keep the pilot light on, which does not cause enough heat to cause any damage to the tank. If you want to turn it off fully, you certainly can. However, you will have to relight the pilot if you do that. I'm not going to cover that in this video, but if you look around, you can find many videos on how to do that. And the other thing is, even though you've turned off everything that you have to, obviously the water inside the tank is still going to be very hot. So it's not a bad idea to um, use some hot water to help cool down the water that's inside there. In my case, what I did was I ran a load of laundry, and I also actually took a shower. So um, by the time the shower was done, I could feel the water starting to cool down just a, little bit to the, just a little bit to the point where it was just warm. So I know that by that point, it's safe to do this procedure that we're going to do here. If your water heater is located in your garage, that's probably the best case scenario. You can just run the hose to drain out onto the driveway. If you're in a basement like I am, it's probably going to be a little bit more difficult, but I can show you the steps that I'm going to take in order to get this procedure done. So one thing we're going to do is I'm going to connect the water, uh, rather the drain hose, to the drain port right there. And it's going to run all along here to this stamp pipe that I have on the floor which you can see is right next to this dishwasher here. Now, um, this will work to a point, because as you can see, the hose has to go up. And initially, I'm sure the pressure from the tank will force the water through, but at some point, it's going against gravity, or rather, all the time it's going against gravity, so at some point, it's probably going to stop because of that reason. So the other thing I'm going to do here, too, is, and it's actually a good way to cover both scenarios in this um, video, I do have a sump pump right over here, as you can see. And once the water is um, too weak to go through to the stamp pipe, I'll show you how to do this scenario here. Now, there are certain steps about this scenario you have to consider, okay? But um, when we get to that, I'll let you know what they are. Up on top of the water heater here, you'll see there's the uh, cold supply pipe, which supplies the water to the water heater. So the first thing is you want to go ahead and turn that off. I have a simple ball valve right here that turns this way. Okay? So we've gone ahead and turned off the water supply. But one thing you want to do is to, um, you also want to go ahead and open up a hot water faucet, just for the sake of, it takes pressure off the system, but also if you try to drain without any of those open, it's like I'm trying to get water to go through a straw with your finger on the top of it. So opening a hot water faucet will allow air to enter the system and allow to, the water to drain more freely. And over here in the first floor master bathroom, are actually three faucets I can use. You only have to use one, but I'm going to use three just for the sake of um, giving a little bit more air and such, and you'll see why later too as well. So we're going to go ahead and open up the hot water. And you'll see it depressurize. Do the same with this one. And the tub as well. And one thing you want to do here too is, you don't have to do it for this particular step, but since we're already here, we'll do it anyway. Any hot water faucet that you open, you want to remove the aerator. And the reason why you do that is because later on when we're refilling, you want the water to come out freely. So in case there's any sediment in there, it gets flushed out the line and not get caught in the aerator. So whatever faucet you open, remove the aerator from it. And now with the hot water faucet open, it should allow air into the system. We're going to go ahead and open up the drain valve. So on this particular valve, it opens with a flathead screwdriver. You can see the fitting right there. And then when we open this, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the water coming out of the hose and just see how it looks. So let's go ahead and open it up. And it's open when this is perpendicular with the uh, direction of the valve. Okay. It's open, and if you need a little bit more flow, one thing you can also do is open up the temperature and pressure relief valve 
let some more air in. And if you have any water alarms like I do, move those away, just to be totally sure. A little bit of water spilled out, but that's okay. Well, if I'm honest, that water looks very clear. So that's certainly a good sign to see, to see the water clear like that. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're, we're just basically gonna go ahead and let this drain. And then once it becomes uh, too much for the uh, gravity overtake, and maybe it'll be okay, who knows. But if anything, once it becomes too strong for that, we'll move to the sump pump, and I'll tell you about how to do that system. And you also wanna be patient because, you know, these water heaters are very big tanks. So with this kind of flow, it is going to take a while for that water heater to drain. So go ahead, be patient, let it drain, and you know, see if you want, see if some, there's something else you want to do in the meantime as it drains. Okay, and it looks like for the most part now the uh, water has stopped coming out. All right, so then we're going to go ahead and move the hose over to the uh, sump pump, and I'll tell you about that. Okay, so if you're going to use the sump pump to drain the water heater, a couple things I want you to take notice of. First of all, do not put hot water in there, okay? Do, do the thing of getting the hot water out by either doing laundry or taking a shower. Do that first because those pumps are designed to um, pump, pump cool water. And if the water is too hot and it's pumping that, it can wear out the pump, make it overheat, break it down. You don't want to do that. So make sure the water is cool before you put it in there. Second of all, it's not a bad idea to get yourself some kind of strainer like I have right here. What I have here is a kitchen strainer with a toolbox on top of it to hold it in place. A finer screen might be better, but this is the best that I got for right now. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to put the hose into that strainer. Just in case any sediment does come out, it'll help actually catch the sediment onto the strainer instead of putting it into the sump and making the pump try to take it, which you don't want to do. You want the strainer to catch any sediment that it might be. So put the hose in there and you can drain it that way. Okay, so I have the hose in there over the strainer. Let's go ahead and open the valve back up, see what happens. Oh yeah, much more water coming out as you can see. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and let the um, strainer catch the remaining water. Yeah, a lot, a lot of water coming out there as you can see. Okay, so as you can see, we've gotten all the water out of the water heater. Came out pretty clean as you can see, which is definitely a good thing. But what you want to do is, you, you kind of want to agitate the bottom a little bit to see if anything else will possibly come out. You want to do it a few times to just see if any more sediment comes out. And if it doesn't, then you're all set. But let me show you what to do. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to turn on the water supply for about maybe 20-30 seconds going to let it, um, it, it does not need to be full pressure by the way, it can be like maybe a quarter to a half, just enough to get water spraying down there at the bottom and to, like I said, agitate the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and do that and then we'll see how the water is coming out. So we're going to open it just a little bit here. So we're going to go ahead and let that spray in the bottom of the tank. And you can hear the water uh, going on in there. Alright, water's coming out now as you can see. And just for a little sample, let's go ahead and take some water here in this cup. And looking at the water, uh, there might be a little bit of a color to it as you can see. So, uh, yeah, so this is why you want to agitate the bottom. So basically what you want to do is you want to keep agitating the bottom of the water heater like that. And then once this water comes out all nice and clear, you should be all set. So keep agitating it a few times, again about 20 to 30 seconds of letting the water run, let the water drain, see how it looks, and then you know if you're all set afterwards. Okay everybody, so I just did that for a fourth time now. I basically let it drain, turned on the inlet again for about 20 to 30 seconds, checked the water, let it drain again, and by the third time I did that, the water looked clear. But I just did it for a fourth time now. Again, turn the water on for 20, 30 seconds, then turn it off and let it drain. And now, if you look at the water this time. Oh yeah, much better, see? All nice and clear, no color to it, beautiful. Just the way it should be. All right, so now we are all finished with the uh, with that um, agitating portion. So now I'm gonna let this drain fully again, and then once it fully drains, we, we will be ready to refill. Actually, quickly here, just a quick show of the strainer. Nothing's on it, so I'm pretty sure um, all we had was that little discolored water, no big sediment or anything. And as you saw, water came in nice and clear, so we're definitely good to go here. 
Okay, we are ready to refill the tank. So what you want to do now is um, maybe just do a quick check, make sure those hot water faucets are still open, just so that way air can escape when it tries to fill. We'll leave the temperature relief valve open for right now. So what we'll do um, is we'll go ahead and we'll close the drain valve now, just like so. Make it perpendicular with the opening. Very nice, okay. Now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and open up, fully open up the cold water inlet. Okay, and as you can hear, the tank is now refilling. So right now, air will be escaping through here for a while and fully through the um, faucets, up, faucets upstairs. Now what you want to do is, um, after a little while, you want you can close the temperature relief valve, but well, you want to at some point because if you keep it open, water is eventually going to start spraying out of here. You don't want that to happen. But what you want to do is, as the tank fills, you want to go upstairs or wherever your hot water faucet is and wait by the wait by the faucet, let all the air purge out, and then once a nice steady stream of water comes out of the faucet or faucets, you should be all set. And we're back at the faucets. You can hear all the air is trying to escape. Oh yeah, I can feel it. So we have this one open, and we're getting there. There we go, we got some water coming out now. And it looks good, we got a full stream of water now coming from the tub and from the sinks. And we should be all good. So go ahead and just check one more time. Oh yeah, water looks great. So our system is all refilled. And needless to say, once you have um, a, a full stream of water coming through your faucets, make sure you go ahead and reinstall the aerators and the O-rings, of course, into the faucets. Okay, and once everything is all full, you got the air out of the lines, you are now ready to restart your heating source. So um, if you have an electric water heater, turn the breaker back on. On this particular gas one, we're going to reopen the valve. Okay, and we're, I'm gonna, first going to turn the thermostat back to where it was right around there. Okay, and simply turn this on and momentarily it should start. There it goes. This, this particular model is a power vent and momentarily we should hear the burner turn on. And we have ignition. Just heard it turn on. And if you have a standing pilot water heater, turn the knob on the top back to on, set the thermostat, and it should kick right on. If you, again, if you turned off the pilot, you will have to relight that. Um, I, again, I'm not going to cover that in this video, but check a number of videos, and I'm sure you can find out how to do that one. And obviously, um, this, this is going to take some time to heat back up. Again, kind of like before we're flushing out the lines. Um, the, the larger your water heater is, the longer it's going to take. So be patient. Could take a while, but soon enough, you'll, you'll be back to having hot water once again. And there you guys go. So that is the procedure of flushing a water heater to help remove any sediment. Again, it's good to do approximately every um, every uh, every year, maybe two years, but maybe sooner if you have well water or very hard water, because you want to keep the water heater in the best shape that it, that it possibly can be. And I'll take the hose off and everything when time permits. But there we go. It's all refilled, heating back up. No leaks. We did a good job. So hopefully this video was helpful to you, and if it was, fantastic. Glad I could help you. Thank you very much for watching, and take care.